Why do track and field jumpers put their hands above their head trying to get the audience to do a slow clap before they jump? You may have seen it and you may have even participated in it yourself, but do you know why? Do you know where this tradition came from and do you know why we still do it? Well, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a deeper look at what we call the jumpers clap. I'm John from Jumpers Junction. I'm an athlete and coach in track and field. In this video, we're gonna be talking about why jumpers, specifically long jumpers, triple jumpers, high jumpers, and pole vaulters, will put their hands above their head, trying to indicate that they want the crowd to participate in a slow clap for them. This actually gets pretty interesting, so make sure to stick around, and also make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I have some really exciting news about my channel, Jumpers Junction, that I wanna share with you. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna look at this three ways. First, we're gonna look at it from the viewpoint of the spectators or the fans. Then we're gonna look at where did this tradition start? And then why do we still use the jumpers clap today? Now I'm a long jumper myself and I've used this many times in the past and I still do. But I always thought to myself, where does this come from? Because I just started using it and I didn't really know why. I had just kind of seen others do it and thought, hey, that's kind of cool. So I went back and did some research and it actually gets really interesting. Now I know I'm not the only one who's tuned in to witness someone trying to start the slow clap. Sometimes the athlete might only get a few spectators to join in or on those special occasions, you could get the entire stadium rhythmically clapping as they try to propel the jumper on to new heights or new distances. And it can be really exciting and a huge moment for not just this athlete, but for the fans. And if you think about it from a fan's perspective, some of the other big sports such as football or baseball, what does the crowd do during the in-between time, in-between periods or in-between innings? They have to figure out something to do and something to keep themselves entertained, whether they go get a new hot dog or whether they go out and do a cheer or a chant or they do the wave, which is usually started by a group of drunk college kids who are out there, they're just trying to get their five minutes of fame, getting their head up on the Jumbotron, but what do they do is they'll stand up and they'll wave their hands, woo, and they try to get it to pass along. They're trying to get other fans to join in and get their moment of shot life, but it keeps them entertained and engaged. Well, if you think back to track and field, there's a lot of in-between time. You have the running events and the 100 meter dash is only gonna last nine to 10 seconds. And then until the next event, you've got that in-between time. So what do the fans do? They want a way to be entertained and engaged in the event. When you're not focusing on the 100 meter dash, the running events only last so long, but the jumping events will last a longer period of time and they'll span multiple running events. So the fans who are there for only the 100 meter dash can now focus on the in-between time in the jumps. And what better way to stay entertained than participating in the jumping events? And how can they participate? Well, they can join in by doing the jumpers clap. And what makes it even more unique is in track and field, especially at the world championships or the Olympics, these global events, you have fans from all over the world and there's athletes from all the world. In the running events, you've got multiple athletes from multiple countries all competing at the same time. In the jumping events, it goes one by one. So it's cool because you can get this sense of unity from the entire stadium, all focused on one athlete, which is very unique compared to some of the other events. And because we are wired to want to see the best out of the best, there becomes this sense of unity between all of the different spectators and fans to all root for one athlete, and especially if there's a record within reach. So when a jumper indicates that you as a fan now have an opportunity to not just participate in the event, but have a hand in actually helping them accomplish this new achievement, you better believe you're gonna participate in the jumpers clap. So the jumpers clap is great for the spectators. It creates a sense of unity between all the different spectators and it helps keep them engaged and entertained, all while helping actually make you feel like you participated in the event. You were a part of something great, which then will make you want to come back and become even more of a fan. And what is the overall goal of these organizers and the TV broadcasting companies? Well, they want to put fans in seats and they want to sell tickets and they want to get people watching and entertained and coming back again. So if you have a way now to be entertained, you better believe that everybody's gonna be on board. So we've seen that, yeah, it's great for fans, it's great for the spectators, but what about from an athlete's perspective? Does the jumpers clap actually help an athlete jump further or higher? 
Well, first, we need to go back and look where it all started. This is a pretty interesting story, and I'm gonna try to summarize it as much as I can. But it goes back to the early 1980s. There was an athlete who was actually the American triple jump record holder back in the day. His name was Willie Banks. He was a charismatic character. He had a fun-loving, very showmanship style personality, and the fans absolutely adored him. The triple jump back in the day, it wasn't one of the bigger events, and especially back then when TV media rights were kind of just now taking on, they really only wanted to put the big events at most of the big meets, and whether that was a big event like the 100 meter dash, or whether it had an athlete that was this big name. So triple jump, unfortunately, just didn't get a lot of opportunities to be featured. But there was one meet over in Europe that was one of the five IAAF Super Grand Prix events that featured the triple jump. And so Willie Banks booked a ticket, he got over there. So he shows up to the Dean Gallen Super Prix event in Stockholm, Sweden in 1981. And when this event started, there was 8,000 in a row and the fans just all checked out. So when Willie Banks finally got up, every jumper tends to have some kind of pre-jump routine, right? They get their mind focused. So what he would do is he would shake his fist a few times and then he would clap to get himself pumped up. And usually he would clap three times, clap, clap, clap. So he gets up for his very first attempt. All the crowd was kind of checked out. And what does every stadium have during the in-between time when there's not a lot going on? Drunk fans. So when Willie Banks steps up, pumps his fist and claps his hands three times, five drunk fans copied him. So that kind of threw him off a little bit. He turns and he looks at him and they're kind of waving at him and he throws him off. And so he gets ready, pumps his fist, claps three times. The fans clap three times again, but he, he throws it off and he runs and he jumps and he jumps 16.80 meters over 55 feet. Huge jump back in the day. So he's all excited. He gets up and he runs over those fans right in the stadium. We're sitting right in the front seat and he's joking around with them. Kind of like, Hey guys, thanks. You helped me jump this. Runs back, puts his Sony Walkman on and starts dancing. So then the next time he gets up, he gets out there, gets on the stage and pumps his fist and claps three times and those fans clap three times. So he turns and he waves at him and points at him and it kind of gets all the other spectators kind of focusing in on what's going on. So then he gets his mind right and claps three times and all of a sudden the whole section claps three times to join in. He goes out and jumps over 17 meters. Big jump. He's excited. It happens again on his third jump. By his fourth jump, the entire side of the stadium clapped three times. It was a big thing. Something big was happening. So after that fourth event, he goes to the officials. He goes and he takes three red flags and says, hey, I'm gonna put one flag where the Swedish record is for the triple jump. Because remember, they're in Stockholm, Sweden. Then he takes a flag and he puts it right where the European record is for the triple jump. Because remember, they're in Europe. Then he takes a flag and he puts it right on the side of the pit where the world record is. The whole crowd then tunes into what's going on because they recognize something great is happening. So then he gets up for his fifth attempt. He walks onto the runway, shakes his fifth, claps three times, the entire stadium claps three times to represent. This is exciting, something big is happening. He takes off, he runs, he hops, step and jump and he lands right at the world record mark. The crowd absolutely went nuts. He gets up, he's cheering, he's exciting, but the judge raises a red flag indicating that he fouled. So being the showman he is, he runs over, he gets on his hands and his knees, looking at the takeoff board, I didn't foul, kind of playing it off, gets up, puts his, puts his Sony Walkman on again, and he starts dancing, the crowd's just into it. They're ready for what's gonna happen in the final attempt. Before he even does anything, the moment he steps on the runway for his sixth and final attempt, the entire crowd, not just clap three times, but start rhythmically clapping all together in what would be the start of the jumper's clap. This then propelled him to jump 17.55 meters or 57 feet, seven inches. Back then this was a huge jump. He was only one millimeter shy of his already American record. The crowd goes nuts. It was a huge moment. And if we remember back then, TV media rights were just now starting to take on some of these bigger events. So over in Europe, he goes to his next meet over in Luzanne, but triple jump wasn't offered because remember it wasn't one of the popular events, but he did jump in the long jump. And the moment he stepped onto the runway for his first long jump attempt, the entire crowd had seen his previous triple jump. They'd seen what happened. So when he stepped onto that runway, the entire crowd starts rhythmically clapping to cheer him on. And he went out, he jumped the best he jumped in a long time. It was a huge event and that kind of started 
the history of what we have now, the jumpers clap. So that's the origin story of how the jumpers clap started, but why do athletes still use it today? This actually is a really interesting topic. Some of these you might have already picked up on, but before I even get started, I want to hear from you. Go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know why you think athletes use the jumpers clap, what it does and how it affects them, because I know there's going to be some really interesting opinions and facts and feedback in here, so I can't wait for the discussion. Okay, so there's actually a few reasons and well, for starters, we've kind of already talked about the fan or spectator's perspective. It's a great way for the athletes to interact with the fans and it's a great way for the fans and spectators to feel engaged in the sport. Create a great sporting environment. Not only does it allow the fans to feel like they're participating in the actual event, also, it's a great way for the athletes to do a little bit of self-promotion. Getting them to interact with their fans can maybe make some more fans and allow them to grow and build their athlete's personal image. Now, I know that's probably not the first thing that comes to mind, but that is maybe something that actually plays into it. But for the most part, it's more psychological. And I know this is kind of already what you're picking up on, so we're going to talk about a few ways that maybe this impacts a jumper's ability to perform. Okay, so in talking about the psychological impact, there's the obvious point that it adds a layer of pressure. Knowing that you've got the entire fan base and spectators all focusing on you and participating in your jump lets you know that there's a sense of either accomplishment when you do good, that they feel like they jumped with you, or that the fans maybe will let them down if you didn't. And for those who thrive under that kind of environment, it can be a very powerful boost. But there's also an audible rhythmic conditioning effect. Now, I don't actually know the official terminology for this, so I'll just kind of try to explain what I mean. Okay, so there's four jumping events in track and field. There's the long jump, triple jump, high jump, and the pole vault. And you can see the jumpers clap in all of these different jumping events. But I'm gonna give the long jump as an example. So when we do the long jump, the main part of the long jump isn't actually the jump, it's the approach, right? Which means that's where they're running down, they're gaining speed. And in the approach, what happens is you're starting from a standstill at some point. You have to overcome inertia, which means you have to run and put a lot of force in the ground. So your ground contacts are going to be a little bit longer. You're going to spend a little bit more time on the ground because you need to push really, really hard. As you get faster, you start to carry some of that horizontal momentum with you. And so your ground contacts are going to get faster and faster. If you think about this from a audible perspective, if a clap represents every time your foot contacts the ground, listen to the cadence here. As your foot contacts the ground, the sound gets faster and faster and faster and faster. So with the slow clap, what happens? The fans all ideally will clap in unison at exactly the same time every time your foot contacts the ground. And then as you run faster, the claps will get faster and faster and faster. Now, that's an ideal situation. In reality, it kind of more just sounds like a general applaud. And then maybe it kind of a little bit gets faster and faster. But if you can tune your mind to the fact that as soon as you hear the clap, you know, because you've done it in practice, what it's supposed to sound like, then that could be a kind of subconscious preconditioning. Now, also in practice, if you spend enough time to know what it's supposed to sound like, that can help you in the way you strategize how you set up your approach. And it can be a benefit or tool for those who are able to utilize it. But the key thing here is this is not for everyone. Some athletes, this would be a complete nightmare and big distraction, but for others, this could be a huge advantage. So I know you're probably thinking one of two ways. This would be extremely distracting, or this would be extremely motivating, know that you have the entire stadium behind you. So for some, this would actually be detrimental and would make them perform worse. But for others, which we are about to see, this could be a huge boost or advantage to help propel them to greatness. Because remember Willie Banks? Well, just four years later, at the 1995 USA Outdoor Championships, he did what he usually did, and he got the crowd clapping. And this helped propel him as he broke Brazilian's Dao de Oliveira's triple jump world record, which had stood for almost 10 years by jumping 17.97 meters, or 58 feet, 11 and a quarter inches. And Banks' triple jump record would then last another 10 years until it was finally broken in 1995 by the current world record holder, Great Britain's Jonathan Edwards. 
Okay, but before you go, I told you that there was some really exciting news that I wanted to share with you. So on this channel, Jumpers Junction, moving forward, I have lined up some amazing interviews and collaborations with other YouTube channels, as well as your favorite college and professional athletes, specifically the Jumpers. So you definitely wanna check this out. Actually, right now you can go to my YouTube channel. If you go to the live tab, you can see a video that we did on a preview of the 2023 outdoor season for the Jumps. And I'm joined on this by Anderson, who has the YouTube channel, The Final Leg, and Cam Van, professional long jumper and CEO of the Coro app. It's an amazing conversation. We get into all the details of what we think is gonna happen for the 2023 jump season, who's gonna do good, our predictions, where we think it's gonna go, and also some of the big popular events that are coming up. You definitely wanna go check that out. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.